Good day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making 1850s and 1860s little baby chemises. Hello and welcome, let's get started. Um, so we're making 1850s and 1860s infant chemises. Um, this is a pattern we're using, it's by my friend Amy from a day in 1862. Um, if she still has this available on her blog, I will link it below. But we're going to be using this pattern and just some regular cotton muslin. And we're going to be making the 24 month size, the 18 month old size, and if I can get it to cut up four at the same time, that would be ideal because then I could just go iron it and cut out the next size. And I have an original chemise of the same design, and it's trimmed with what would have been called wave braid, kind of similar to what we would call rick rack today. So we're going to trim all of mine with some uh, vintage stock rick rack, because vintage stock is more similar to excess stock than what is available today. We are also going to need a little bit of binding, so I think I'm going to go ahead and use what is here. Two inches, so not quite a whole chemise. So I'm going to need quite a bit of this. So I'm going to iron more fabric, cut the next size. We're just going to just going to do the three sizes down, and um, probably iron all these because all the edges are frayed a little bit. And then we'll get to sewing. So we're doing the run and fell seam. We're just going to run or sew all of these seams as quickly as possible. worth a try. I also cut a center slit on the sew that by machine. I might as well. So let's do this um, seven more times. I'll get it all done so I can sew in the car. Well, oh, again, sewing anyway. Right, let's go ahead and hem them. Move that needle over. attempt to sleep him. So at this point we're ready to put on the uh, not waistband, neckline band, the neck band. Um, I guess I could be putting trimming on this. I probably will. end because the trim is usually machine stitched on at least on the one I have it is and, and the original baby's cap I have that has the baby braid on it is also um, the trim is done on by hand all right so I have Rhett doing the gathering because so I finished the hemming for the sleeves and the hem so I have him doing the handwork. I am over here putting the uh, neck band. So it just requires just very little gathering right in the center back and to the center front. And then we'll stitch this on by machine, iron it over, and I can do the rest of it by hand. And that was kind of the goal here is to get everything by machine done. 
So yeah, we changed venues. We're at my mom's house in her sewing room. Because I did not get this done yesterday when I should have. So I got that one on. Let's go ahead and stitch this down. very lightly gathered just at the front and then I left this one plain and a little bit at the back as well just slightly. Then we'll iron this and we'll do the rest by hand. So at this point we're doing just hand work. So it's turning over this, binding it, and doing the button and buttonhole which I left my buttonhole or I left my buttons at the house. So we either have to do those at home or when we go to antiquing later, I can maybe pick up some what I can maybe pick up some bone buttons. That would be the ideal thing. Alright, I'm here at uh, San Angelo's Fourth of July celebration. Uh, trying to finish these chemises. So I am very quickly doing a little bit of a seam just to attach this uh, neck band. It's just a whip stitch. Sometimes when you're sewing things, you find the weirdest, you know, pockets of time to be able to finish your projects. And right now it's, while well, my husband is over there manning a cannon, and I'm sitting here with nothing to do, dressed out in 19th century clothes. Just trying to show you around. So it's really nice out here. There's a river. Yeah, they're doing a program over there, but Rhett... Manning a cannon. And the weird music's from the vendors they put the cannon next to, so, you know, sometimes things like that happen. And I apologize for the bad angle. I managed to leave my tripod somewhere. I think it's in the car. I'm trying to get all of these neck bands on so we can do buttons and buttonholes. And I'm doing two of each size with bone buttons for lower class ish and two with china buttons that are really supposed to be mother of pearl but apparently I don't have any mother of pearl buttons so I'll get changed out whenever I get some other ones in stock. I'm just trying to keep filming until I shoot the cannon because I kind of want to catch that on camera. So as usual Rhett's the one who actually gets to pull the thing that makes the cannon go. This is where I keep my buttons. So let's see we're going to get two little china ones and two of the smallest bone ones that I have. These will work. Alright, let's see if we can do it from this angle. So, I have the front of the chemise. Oh. And I missed it. I was not ready for them. Maybe next time. But I'm just stitching it to one side of the chemise. Okay, now we get to do the buttonhole. I don't have my buttonhole scissors, so we're here with regular scissors. These are not working very well. I tried to get it on film and I didn't because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, they're, they're kind of just whenever Sarah said.
we were done, but I forgot that we had to trim these things. I've been spending so long with these shirts that weren't trimmed that I forgot that we were trimming these. So for the ones with um, uh, the china buttons, I'm putting on a very narrow lace just by whipping it to the edge. On the larger set, the uh, two-year-old ones, uh, I ran out of fabric. I don't know if I mentioned this before. I ran out of fabric. And so I had to use uh, one I was able to get out of a very nice, like almost reproduction. It, it's very similar to Perry Long Cloth, and I can't find it for sale anymore. But it's what I used to make all my underpinnings out of. So that's a very nice, fine quality cotton. And then I didn't have quite enough of that to even make a second little baby chemise. So I uh, cut this one out of wall. So it's very nice and light and fine. This will probably end up being my um, upper class filming. <laughs> like when we film upper class getting ready videos or whatever. So this will probably be the one that I use for toddlers. And I'm just whipping it to the edge. And it's just very lightly on, you know, I didn't want anything that was big because I didn't remember I was going to trim this when I cut it. So it's still quite high and I didn't want it to you know, go to their neck or anything or go to halfway down their arm. Hang on, my thread's a little bit kind of tangled. And it's very nice and light. It's be really good summer chemise. But there it is, all trimmed with a nice little lace detail. I have a good length. Uh, this is vintage or antique, I'm not entirely sure, um, little trim. So it looks like this. It looks very similar to uh, waved braid, but it has like a little design, like a little part to it as well. And it's not quite white. I think it just needs to be soaked in oxyclean. But we're going to go ahead and put it on, and then when I wash it, hopefully it'll become a little bit more white. And this should be a little simpler to sew on. Let's start on the sleeve. So I'm going to put this on the outside because it has that little pretty detail, so I don't see why I should hide that underneath. And I'm just going to put the little rickrack type um, edging over the sleeve. So extend the shirt about as much as that little lace did on the other one. Chemises are always white, trimmings are always white, so I really do hope that this turns out white when I wash it. Otherwise that'll knock a few points off the authenticity scale. <laughs> but it's so hard to find trimmings that are appropriate and a good scale and a good um, fineness. It's just so difficult unless you're doing it yourself, which I don't necessarily have time for, so I kind of depend on this vintage stock stuff a lot. And sometimes that vintage stock stuff isn't white, it's ecru. But you can kind of see I'm just doing little stitches and I'm going back and forth from the front to the back. Make sure the whole thing is sewn on. I'm not going all the way through I'm, for most of them. Uh, there's a few of them that have gone a few, all the way through on accident. But uh, on most of them, I'm just kind of going through because the sleeve is multiple layers and trying to just go with the first layer or two so you don't see the stitches on the bottom. But I'll just continue in this manner to get the other sleeve done, the other, or the neckline done, and the same stuff. And, well, actually, I might not do the neckline of these because it's such a stock. Do I want to do the whole thing? I mean, it would look nice with the whole thing. But I feel like I should just leave this plain. Since this is the lower class plainer stuff anyway, it's not true on the next one. Let's do that. We'll just trim the sleeves on this one. So I have this one, I have, I have this is my first one that I've done with this. So I have three other schmeezes to do with this uh, trim. And then we'll get to see them all completely done side by side. You can kind of see the differences in the lower class and the upper class ones. That's what it is, the fabric differences with the larger size. And here we are. So there's our little 1850s and 60s chemises, basically. Oh, I'm so tired of working with what got me. 
at least this one was at least you know partially machine sewn. Like I did have to do a lot of handwork still, but it's not so bad. But you can kind of see the the fancier ones. The pretty little lace detail. And then there are the planner ones with the trim work that I'm really hoping turns white after washing. Because <laughs> it's a little, it's ecru right now. We'll see what I can do with it. But yeah, I mean, if nothing else, I can lay it out in the sun and bleach it. That should probably do the trick. That's what laundry practices were anyway, so. See what bluing and some uh, sun bleaching will do to it, and I'm pretty sure we might get it back to at least more of an off-white so it's not quite as noticeable. But those are our little, little tiny chemises. They are so cute. I mean, miniature anything is cute, so why baby clothes are cute, because everything's in miniature, and miniature is always cute. So, baby clothes has the advantage over doll clothes because they are not as miniature so they're easier to sew but they still have the pretty little miniature effect so they're still cute it's like the best of both worlds now some of those corners can be a little fiddly like sewing hems on these but it actually honestly wasn't all that bad my machine does it pretty well you just gotta have you have to know how to where to put the fabric and that sort of thing to make it easier on yourself but yeah i mean we got eight more chemises, and I have eight more to do because I gotta make the 1870s and 80s ones. But, I mean, we're getting there. We're slowly plugging away, and we won't have very much more to do for shirts. And the next month, I get to work on just petticoats because petticoats change just slightly. It's the stupid waistlines on me, they just change. They, some of them are you know, higher waisted, and then there's the lower waisted ones, and of course the machine sewn, and the hand sewn, and yeah, so. I think I'm going to spend a whole month on petticoats, too. But, but then we get to do something slightly different with, like, baby corsets and drawers, and then we finally get to go to dresses, because we'll be done with underpinnings. I guess I have to do caps somewhere in there, too. I think caps come right after this, actually. Um, just two weeks of caps. That's that won't be as bad. But I'm getting a little tired of making shirts. I mean, these are really shaped differently, and they are a lot easier without gussets and all that. So that was good. But if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Remember that we're doing baby clothes every Friday. So if you just want to tune in on Fridays, I'm pretty sure you can uh, click the little bell notification to get notified just on similar videos, and hopefully it'll pick out just the ones that you like. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video.